Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. 692 days last the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Deputy head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, Rostislav Shurma, said at the event in Davos that this year Ukraine will cover the budget deficit mainly thanks to the help of international partners, but in the following years it will be covered thanks to revenues from the frozen Russian assets, reports Interfax Ukraine. According to him, Ukraine will need about 10 to 15 billion dollars for that. At the same time, Ukraine's need for external funding to cover the state budget deficit in 2024 is about $40 billion. The deputy head of the president's office added that it is much easier to legally resolve the issue of providing these funds to Ukraine than the issue of confiscating the Russian assets themselves. Reuters writes that the West is open to the idea of seizing 300 billion US dollars in Russian assets to help Ukraine, but believes it still needs to find reliable legal mechanisms, reports Ekonomichna Pravda. US Special Representative for the Economic Recovery of Ukraine Penny Pritzker explained that in order to develop a mechanism for the confiscation of Russian assets, it is necessary to involve a huge number of lawyers. She informed that real efforts are being made in that direction, but, quote, we are far from the result, unquote. The lion's share of Russian assets is frozen in the Euroclear depository in Belgium. Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croix said he does not object to the confiscation of frozen assets, but a clear legal mechanism is needed for this. Meanwhile, the tax on the frozen assets in Belgium amounted to about 1.3 billion euros in 2023, and in 2024 it will amount to about 1.7 billion euros. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family, as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced that Berlin will provide Kyiv with more than 7 billion euros worth of military goods in 2024, reports European Pravda. The announcement was made after a phone conversation with U.S. President Joe Biden. The parties reportedly discussed, among other things, the urgency of further support for Ukraine. Schultz stated that he and President Biden are united in their desire to continue to provide financial, humanitarian and military support to Kyiv. The White House issued a similar statement, saying that the two leaders had coordinated further unwavering support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. Later yesterday, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell said that he expects the Senate to take up a bipartisan deal on funding for Ukraine and border security next week. McConnell noted that Democrats control the Senate agenda, but he expressed confidence that negotiators will release a deal on border security in the coming days. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer echoed McConnell's confidence in a deal, saying we are closer than we've ever been. The package will include more than 60 billion US dollars in aid to Ukraine, 14 billion to Israel, and another 14 billion to help protect the border. The Security Service of Ukraine opened an investigation into the circumstances of the illegal wiretaping and filming of representatives of the investigative journalism project Bihus Info, reports Interfax Ukraine. In its statement, the security service stressed that transparent and unimpeded work of independent and professional media is an important condition for the development of Ukraine as a democratic state. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky in his evening video address commented on the situation as well, saying that any pressure on journalists is unacceptable. A video supposedly showing Bihus Info investigation media staff members abusing illegal drugs at a New Year party was posted online on 16th of January. The video features wiretapped phone calls about purchase of different drugs and video of their alleged consumption. Denis Bihus, who runs the project but currently serves in the military, released a video message apologizing. He said that regrettably some of the team had violated the project's principles and values and tough changes would follow. Later he also commented on the situation with covert filming and wiretapping. Bihus claimed that the editorial team had been under surveillance for about a year. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast. We are a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. 
we call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.